Our perception is contextual. We pay attention to a small slice of the world that's relevant to us. That's why it's hard to tell that my eyes and my mouth are upside down while I'm upside down. But it's really horrifying when I'm right side up. Here's another way that our perception is contextual. Listen to this annoying sound. Ba, 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 ba. While the door is open, we can hear fa. But then when we close the door and we keep listening, ba, 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 ba. We hear ba. You can be aware of the illusion, but it's built into the environment. The same way that a room is built into the environment. You open the door to the room, and so you see the room while you're there, but then you can close the door and then you no longer see the room the same way. Our perception is contextual in other ways. This is a one-way door. I don't know what's behind this door. It's a door into the unknown. I can listen carefully through the door. But I can't really make out what that sound is behind it. Luckily, I have the key. But the key isn't for the door, it's for my brain. In psychic research, the emotional distance between the researcher and his subject is inevitably diminished until it is no more than the distance between any two persons. The acquiescence of the subject to the demands of the researcher comes nothing more nor less than an individual act of faith, of love. Basically, once you've used the key to unlock your mind, you no longer hear the fragmented message. The psychic research, the emotional distance between the researcher and the subject, Certain shifts in perception are discrete like this. What was unknown to us is now known, and so until the memory fades in about a year, we'll be in the new room perceptually, and it'll be impossible for you to actually hear the fragmented message that we heard just a little bit ago. Our perception is based on our experience, which is based on our memory of our perception, which is our experience. And the content of a game occupies the cycle between our perception and our experience. In a sense, we unite with the game. That's why a game doesn't just feel like an experience, it is an experience in and of itself. Our experience allows things to present themselves in more than one way at the same time. Gestalt principles say that our perception follows certain patterns in which the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It also states that we take the shortest route there. I take this to mean that the way that we consolidate memory is efficient and its byproduct is generative. So we see more than what's there while missing most things almost entirely. Games don't usually need to act as like great simulations of, or even model real world processes, right? Typically any analog we can make with a game process and a real life process is simplified down to the point where it's only somewhat resembling reality, right? <laughs> Luckily, our perception is contextual. And some might see this as a, a flawed or an imperfect perception, but rather I like to think of it as optimal, given our constraints. We don't remember most things, and we perceive very little of what's around us. But when we play games, we feel emotions. Fuck! We use our imagination, we visualize and strategize, and we build memories. And those memories change our perception of the world. Fuck this shit! This fucking world. So if you got to the end of this video and you're like, why are you talking about perception? I wanna know about game design. Uh, or whatever. <laughs> I recommend checking out Sakurai's channel. Uh, and if you don't know who Sakurai is, go figure out who he is and then go check out his channel. Bye! Everything went fucking bad. Fuck this shit, man. Fuck.